I've just been wandering around the garden looking at all these perennial plants that we've got that have all now burst back into life. So we're getting quite a bit of colour in garden already, which apart from vegetable growth is always nice to see in early spring. This one behind me, although I forgot what it's called at the moment, bursts back into life and it looks absolutely amazing. Lovely plants these. And when I got this plant, it was very small and we just kept potting it on. So now we've got a really good sized plant and of course a perennial one at that, which just comes back every year, bigger and bigger. This is pretty much how it started off as well. Cause we have got a couple around garden. We just put them in these little barrels and let them grow. We give them a bit of a cutback every year and before you know it you've got a nice established little plant. We've also got quite a big plant outside and it's called a T-Rex, well that's the nickname for them. And last year we seen a little shoot coming up from the side of it and the leaves on that plant are like this. And although it's a tropical looking plant it can actually stand temperatures down to like minus 30 and it doesn't die. All the leaves just fall off it every year. And that just leaves trunk of that plant. And then at this time of year, it slowly starts to grow back. Then it puts out even bigger leaves and extra leaves as well. So the plant gets bigger and bigger and these plants can grow huge. I'll just show you the plant that we took a cutting from. So although it doesn't look much at the moment, it is quite a tall plant now. That was originally in a container as well. And you can see that it's starting to put out lots of fresh growth already and these leaves are quite small but they get massive and it was right at the base of this plant that we saw another baby one coming up and i've just noticed that we may have the start of another right down there it looks like there's another baby t-rex aren't we and we could dig that up and maybe try and repot it on. We'll have to look into that. But in a few months' time, this plant will be huge. As rhubarb doing well. We've got even more growth on this now. But that's really filled out already. You have to watch out for this though. If you look there, that is a flower. So when you see those, to take them off it'll still keep producing rhubarb but they sometimes prematurely flower early in here so you need to get rid of those but don't cut them off you need to break those off you can see there where flowers are going to try and form so what I'll do is I'll just bend that stalk there so it comes off like that and just get rid of that flowering part and then it'll continue to grow for a bit longer looks like there's another potato plant there trying to grow we pulled that out quite recently and it's still trying to grow back i actually put that carrot container right over here we haven't looked at this for a while we've already had an harvest of carrots this year i want to see if there's any more while i'm outside it's not raining for a change today so i'm just gonna pull a clump up Check all that away. And there we go. We've got a few carrots. They might be quite small, but they're still carrots. So that's brilliant. You just come out and have a look through your containers and you've got things grown. I'm just going to pull one more up and then I'm going to leave it. Nice little bunch of sweet baby carrots there. It is the best thing about container growing as well. You just wander out into the garden very early in the year and you'll get unexpected little harvests like that while all your newly planted stuff is just starting to mature. But that T-Rex plant looks like it's got another baby one on it. And we took one from it last year and that's it there. That's put on a nice bit of growth again only in quite a small container but all the new leaves 
are on the way. I think they're called the tetrapanics. So the big plant, which unfortunately we're going to have to leave behind, but we've managed to save ourselves one of the what they call pups. So we can definitely take that with us and grow that on and eventually put it into a bigger container as well. We've also got an handful of carrots this morning, so it's all good so far. The temperatures aren't too bad at the moment. Ideally, you want your temperatures to be above 50 through night. And that way there's less chance that your crops are gonna get damaged. But I have noticed that in a week or so, it's dropping down to mid 40s. So once again, keep that fleece handy. It doesn't hurt to chuck fleece over the top. And it also protects them from pests as well. But one thing I did want to do today is move a couple of these peppers. We looked at them the other day and I noticed there was a bit of yellowing happening on leaves. It doesn't look as bad today because we're slowly trying to dry it out. But rather than leave it until it gets any worse, I think what I'm going to do is pop a couple of these out, put them into another pot. But if the compost in the bottom here is really wet, what I'll do is I'll shake some of it away. We'll repot it into fresh and we'll dry it out even quicker. That way, as plants are going to do a lot better on the next couple of weeks. So that's one job for today. I think what I'll do for now is I'll move them into these cells. They are quite a bit bigger. So we'll get a lot more time to grow them on in these. And we can keep everything together as well. Once again, it's not taking up a lot of space. But this is gonna be what I call loose filling. Just fill it up, level it off, but don't compress it down because we need to get these little plants in. So I'm just gonna pop one out. Now we can see there's not much of a root system on this plant, but the compost is really damp at the bottom. So even in sun, it's gonna take quite a while to dry that out. So in that case, what I'm gonna do is just release all that compost from round edge and just leave quite small root ball and then I'm just going to make a nice deep hole in that compost and drop that plant in so it's going into basically dry compost now and because it's dry it's a bit looser it's easier for those roots to try and get old again just a quick easy job and I've also buried it a little bit deeper as well which you can do with peppers as you do tomatoes. I think I'm just going to compress that down a little bit more. Not too much though. It won't hurt your peppers burying them a little bit deeper but they don't grow roots from stems like tomatoes do. So that's in fresh compost, a bit of extra nutrition and the base and the roots are now dry. So that's what we'll do with a few of these. Let's see if we can get this out all in one. Again, quite wet on that bottom. Break all that away. Just leave us that bit of a root, drop it in and then pinch it down and that quick and easy we can fix those plants that are starting to yellow a bit that one's got quite big leaves on it as well but this is one that's yellowing more than others and that leaf's also starting to curl which they also do when they're over water so again break that away shake that off and drop it in and of course these are going back indoors for now I have left them outside a couple of times, but as them temperatures start to drop down just a little bit, you're better off playing it safe. There we go, that's six repotted into dry compost really quickly. And that's going to make all the difference to those plants. Another quick job, definitely worth doing. Give your plants the best start they can get, and if you have to do this, then do it. You'd be glad that you did in a couple of weeks when you see these plants starting to flourish again and that yellowing leaf starting to become green again. So six sweet bell peppers potted on, ready to go back indoors. 
If you do this with your peppers or your tomatoes and they fall over, don't worry about it, they'll get back up. It's just a little bit of transplant shock, that's all. So because I've repotted those, I'll keep them out of sunlight, if we actually get any today. We'll pop them back indoors, let them recover and see how they get on of it next week or so. And just before I go, thank you so much to Paul Braithwaite for making a donation to the channel. I really appreciate that Paul and we'll get that put to good use as we go through April. So thank you very much for your generosity. If you're interested in seeing what else we're doing over the next couple of weeks, then please hit that subscribe button, press that notifications bell, and I'll see you next time. Take care.